Hey, it's Joe Glides from the Automator, and this week of what we automated with AutoHotKey, we're going to take a look at uh, what we did here. So let me jump into my desktop and use Prompt Assistant to launch the recently modified script. So it's looking for them on my S drive. So there's 62 files. Let's see here. So yeah, we were doing updates to automate my task, and this is where Erfian, <laughs> somehow he forgot part of the conversation, but... We're going to build in using AI to do image search as well as find text, as well as saying, let's say that, oh, I wanted to click these coordinates. And I'm like, why don't we have a little macro? You can move your mouse over there. If, if you, you know, sometimes you want something dirty and quick. And so you want to just be able to move my macro here and click a button, click, send a mouse click here. And so we'll, we'll have something that simple, but it'll say, do you want that relative to the screen, relative to the window you're on, right? Because those are um, important things, but it'll be very, very basic but why not have different approaches? That way, depending on what you're doing, right, we can have different ways to do it. So um, we were working some more um, on Automate My Task, Chrome Mark Active Tab. That's a script, we haven't released it yet, but it, uh, it allows you, even if you're in incognito mode, to highlight your active tab. And actually, during the hero call yesterday, and I asked Irfan to look into this, um, one of the hero members, Ray, asked about, what about if we could put a, a highlight around the active tab in site. Now with the ultimate spy, we were able to look at UIA and see that there is a way to highlight that. Um, let me see here. I forget if I have, uh, well, I have it in, in prompt assistant. So is there an ultimate spy? Oops. I think I clicked the wrong one. Yeah. I'll try that again. Ultimate spy. So this, of course, is our discovery tool, and you can use this to say, well, what, what can we automate? And here, oh, look, you know, ACC or UIA. So I'm going to switch to UIA. And then this is uh, basically, it's a little bit adapted, but it's Desclata's uh, tool that he wrote. Um, and see how it's highlighting those? So we just, during the hero call, we're like, look, this is definitely, well, since we can see that, we can put a border around it. And if you expand, well, if we do this, and hit F1 again, I think that's what, oh, escape. Escape stops the capture. I probably have the same hotkey to start and stop it, but anyway. Um, and then you go over here. Um, I think we could say, yeah, highlight. Let's see what this does. Um, test script. Oh, and I had the wrong thing highlighted, but let's not worry about that. This is why I don't write the code. But Irfan's going to look at that because... I totally get what Ray was saying. Is it's that's a very small shade difference in color. So yeah, we haven't written that one yet, but that is one that we'll be working on. Um, so Clipshare, we we are adapting Clipshare. We actually Irfan had a great idea to when you send a message, um, you can have it speak the message if you care to. Let me see if I can, and I can never remember the hotkey for it. Um, I need to change it. So Alt Shift M. Let's see if I can send it to myself. Hello, Joe. Now let me turn on my desktop audio so this way maybe it'll pick it up here. How are you? So I could send, I could pick um, like Isaiah's. Oh, he's not even, oh, Raptor X, yeah. But I can hit send. Hello, Joe. How are you? So hopefully that audio, I listen to it, but then I can now that it's there, I can click it and have it disappear. Uh, but Clipshare allows us to hit a hotkey and get it copied to the clipboard that is available to these guys using a network drive. And we're, um, that one's getting closer to where we can share it with the general population. It's not something we initially, it's really for people who work in groups or if you work on more than one computer, it's really handy. That's uh, where I created it a, uh, at least 10 years ago, probably longer. And uh, we've jazzed it up a bit and we use a Dropbox to keep all of our files synced. And that's how that works. So um, this effortless video reducer, uh, Irfan, and we're getting really close to publishing that one. It will reduce file sizes. Uh, let me see if there's any into here. Not It's not here, though. It's here. I think I moved them all this morning. Um, yeah, I don't see any obvious ones. It'd have a PRC. Normally, I end them with PRC. And it, and it shrinks it down anywhere between half to a tenth of the file size um, of what they normally are using. It, it's wrapping FFmpeg using, usually, we have it using the H.265 encoding, but it's crazy powerful. This MP3 ripper, I was just telling um, Irfian, I asked to make an update to it, and I, I assume it was him, but suddenly it's uh, it's giving the files the wrong file name. So it, you can rip, actually, let me, let me demonstrate that. So let me, is that what I had here? No, I already closed. Let me, oh, I have it open on Instagram. I'll launch it. 
So this is the tool. Um, and then let's grab a video. Let's put, this is these videos. This is an hour long video, hour and 15 minutes, right? 411 megs. Um, I can choose the bitness. And I, I found also because I wanted to extract um, some audio to share with people. And I wanted it to be as low a quality as it could, but still sound good to reduce file size. So I can select a folder and pick all the files on there, or I can just drag and drop a file on here. And now it is ripping the, and now look at that, 180 um, speed. So that's crazy fast. So one hour is going to be done, you know, in a minute or whatever. Like it's really short. So, and then you'll have an MP. Now what's funny is it'll actually say, you know, put the underscore PRC and then say MP4 and it should say MP3. So this tool, I actually use it also. I had audio files, and I'm like, I can still use this thing to, to convert and to um, shrink the audio files down. Let's see if that date modified. Um, so this is that MP, and it's really an MP3 file. But notice it's 21 megs instead of um, 411. Right now, it's saying MP4, but if you if I changed it, it would work just fine as an MP3 audio file. But yeah, it's very cool. So obviously, we got a little more work to do on that. Um, the podcast to video is sort of the reverse. It's kind of funny. It's a uh, you take an audio file and convert it to MP4 format. So I was listening to several hours of Dan Kennedy audio seminar when I was on the tractor the other day, and I really liked a couple points he made. And I was like, okay, but it was it was only like 10 minutes out of, you know, several hours. So I'm like, well, how am I going to find this? And so I used this, and I, let me, I can go ahead and launch that one. Let's see, podcast to video. So if I double click here, it opens a folder. It's on the other screen. And then now here we can drag in pictures. So let's say I have a small picture. Um, and now let me come back to here. Well, I don't want to do it with that one. But I can drag in an audio file, almost any type. It takes a lot of types. And it will convert it into an MP4 file uh, with this picture on it. That allows me to upload it to YouTube. And then I can get the subtitles very, you know, for free and easy. But I can also use AI because I have an extension that, that summarizes the videos. But um, what I did was I uploaded it there and I got the transcripts. And I was able to easily find where it was in that video what I was looking for. So... Uh, that's another one. That'll be another paid. Actually, the part, interesting enough, I was listening to was Dan Kennedy talking about how much free stuff should you really give away. And that, you know, he, he says you should, you know, there's three main purposes of free stuff. And, you know, one is just to get attention. One is to, to show um, people that you're willing to share and kind of build build a relationship with them. And I forget what the third one was off the top of my head. But... Yeah, I'm really leaning towards, I think we'll start um, selling more of our scripts, usually still for like a dollar or something, right? Just to, to weed out people who just always want everything for free, and, and not that I have a problem with that, but they're not our customers, right? And I'm trying to identify our customers and market to them, so that's what we're probably probably going to end up doing here pretty soon. Um, so that was just updating the script object, quick raw edit. Here's another one. Now, actually... Once I found, I used YouTube. I really, I gotta make, I gotta do a whole video on showing how I did this. Uh, but this tool, let me go ahead and show it. This quick raw edit, let me launch it. Um, this one, you can drag either a video or an audio file, and that's what I ended up doing, um, onto here. And I don't wanna drag a hero call, because I don't want, that's not really share, uh, fair. Well, I have a video on quick raw edit. Let's drag that in. Ironically, this is about, this video is about this. Um, hey, who's that handsome guy? No, uh, anyway, so you can come in here and say, oh, I'm going to go to a different time point. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's the volume. I'm an idiot. Duh, sorry. So, and I'll hit start. And then I can move it along here and say, you know, normally I'd hit play and listen to it. So let's say split end. Now that's going to be a 16 minute clip. So I already have a video recorded this. And I'm going to hit split end. So now that's going to be a, it's going to extract a one minute and six second thing. I can give it a file name. If I can spell and say cut media and it's going to take that um, let's see oh it's not a big video anyway but um, I I don't have to go re-render the whole thing it, it's already done right so it went in extracted it that's the cool thing about FFmpeg it other tools you have to re-render everything and, and if it's a four-hour video in order to extract a little bit man it can take some serious time 
after Vimpeg kind of goes in. And it can't be as precise, like, per second, because you'll lose a little bit because of keynotes or whatever. But it does an amazing job. So, yeah, that's that's what how I extracted what I wanted. And then I um, I actually, this works on, on MP3 files, audio files, or video files. So I just did it straight with the um, original audio file and was able to get exactly what I wanted to share with my friends. So uh, uh, this one, it's interesting, a couple weeks ago we had a call... Um, it was actually a consultation with a guy who, who I didn't realize at the time, I think his name was Thomas, was very advanced in programming, um, really smart guy, and it was a really fun, interesting call, and we spent like two hours with him and tried different approaches. We discussed a lot of stuff about AutoHotKey and things in general. He's a hero member, and he kind of, he's never been on a call, but he, he just um, want, he wants to support the program of getting AutoHotKey out there and, and educating people, so that's why he's a member. And anyway, so... After that two hours, we ended up not really helping him, and I didn't charge him for the two hours because you know I only I only want to charge people we have we add value. Anyway, the point of that was during it he he mentioned something that at certain times he can't he's unable to do certain things but would like to watch our courses, but he um, he's not in front of a computer he's in front of a TV and and I said yeah. You know, we don't have an easy way, but I'm like, he, he seemed like a really good guy and I really trusted him. So I'm like, you know, a couple of years ago, I worked on this tool f with using FFmpeg to overlay text on the screen at random places. And so what we're going to do for him is for a course that he wants, he can buy the course and then we'll overlay his name at different places at different times on that video. And that way, if it's different places at different time, it'd be really hard to obfuscate. Um, so... Because the courses are our livelihood, right? So um, it's where we, we make about half our money there in courses and half on consulting. Um, and no, because the hero group fits in there somewhere. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to make it where we can distribute the MP4 files and people can quote unquote own them, but it'll have their name on there. And that way, if they ever share it somewhere and we see it, we know who to go, you know, mercilessly attack. Anyway. Um, so that's a cool one. Or uh, Rizwan's been working on that one. It's getting pretty close, but um, we're getting there. Backup FFmpeg. Uh, it's just a backup copy of that. A couple of those. We're testing a lot of stuff, and there's going to be a lot of different uses for that. But that's that's how we plan to use initially that one. Flexifinder. That's just the search tool where I can use a hotkey or I can click it and search certain sites by default and add more to them. It's very cool. I'm not sure what we did, what change we made. Oh, I know what it was. Um, so let me pull it up here. Uh, so when you come into options and you make a change, let's say I switched to dark mode and I hit apply, what I told Rizwan, because he's the one that basically built that, oh, and it didn't work. I thought we had that fixed. Oh, no, cause, cause, because that was a major change. Um, some of them, I think if we come in here to options and... No, I, anyway... The change is so major that if it's a, if it's a big change, or maybe we change the hotkey. Let's let's say Control Alt S, Control Shift S. Okay, let's try that. Um, nope, still makes it disappear. That GUI shouldn't disappear because the preferences. You know, I'm making a change of preferences. I probably still want the tool up. So that was the one thing I had. I thought he changed that, uh, but maybe we decided against it because. If you're changing the size of the GUI, the colors, it's drastic changes, and, and you kind of have to redraw everything. But it should still pop right back up, regardless. All right, so um, inline com. I don't. Oh, Irfan was working on our checklist tool, which is really cool. We made some. We had a um, a client consultation, uh, with another hero member, uh, Scott, and we realized during the call that there were a couple things that I didn't even know you could do in Excel. It was called an indirect method. And Irfan was doing it. I'm like, what's this indirect thing? So he explained it to me. It's similar to the offset, except for basically it's kind of like if you refer to a variable and you want to get the content of the variable instead of the variable, you can do an indirect to get that, to pull where it's pulling from kind of thing is the way I understood it. But um, so we, I asked Irfan to go back and we were also trying to apply table themes and that wasn't in our ma our Excel function library. So after we did it with the client, I asked Irfan if he would go back and update our Excel function library, both in V1 and V2, to include the indirect example and an example of applying a table and applying different, um, basically different um, types of pattern patterns. The every, color every other line, you know, color the color with extremes. 
and he was making it really complicated in listing, well, there's like 50 or 100 different types of shades, and let's have them automate and pull it. I'm like, that's that's not the goal of the Excel function libraries. It's not there to be every possible solution. You know, we I said pick, you know, five or seven of them, and then show them how they can get the full list if they want to. Like, build a program where they can run it and get the full list. But don't make this really convoluted, crazy thing, because the whole point about that Excel function library is to make it easy. Um, so it's a really great library. Prompt Assistant, this is the tool I used to launch this. It's a great tool. Actually, a hero member, Thomas, had a really, really cool idea. That, well, you guys be the judge. You tell me. He had a really cool idea, because in Prompt Assistant, you can run, you can trigger auto hotkey code from within it. You can put the code in there and say, this isn't text for a snippet. This is actually code I want you to run. Well, things like for our, our V2 Notify class, we use a lot, right? Because it's really great to send notifications to people. And um, he's like, you know, there are some libraries I use a lot. I'd like to just have them always included. So his, I believe, his pro um, what he proposed was, what if we point to air, you know, point to the include folder and always include everything in your library. And I'm like, you know, I have hundreds of scripts in my both V1 and V2. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't want to do that. However, what we can do is give you an edit field for both V1 and V2 code. And anything that you link, you list any path of scripts there. And when you go to launch a V1 script, it will automatically include those V1 scripts um, libraries for you or the V2, right? So I think it was a really good compromise because that way you can choose. Now it'll be for every script. Like anytime you run our hacking code, even if you're not using Notify, it's going to be included so that you'll have a little more memory usage. But I think it, it makes it easy because then I don't have to go remember. If there's certain libraries I use a lot, like UIA or ACC or our Notify class or the Excel function library, I, don't, I just put it once in there and I don't have to always include it which I think is just awesome. So that, that was really cool. Um, and, and Isaias did that for us, and we're testing it, and we'll get that out probably uh, maybe another week or so. We need to do more testing with it. But uh, And I think Thomas got a copy of it, too, to test. Prompt assistant. Actually, Isaias was saying and we'll have to write it down to go back and make a video on it. He said something about, you know, cues are the things like in the edit field. You can pre-populate it. Um, like, if this search tool here... If this didn't have something in it, you could have a word in here that says search, and it's kind of grayed out, but it, it gets called a queue. It, it triggers you to say, and it should say, like, enter your search here, right? Um, and what Isaiah realized was when it's more than one line, either it doesn't work entirely or the second line doesn't work. I didn't, I wasn't seeing his screen when he was telling me, but it was interesting. So it, he was adding a queue to those libraries where they are. And um, it had something to do with when there was multi-line something that it didn't quite work. So we'll have to document that and do a video on it. Uh, quick code. We updated our quick HK V2 converter. So this script, apparently, it gets updated pretty, pretty often for converting V1 to V2 code. And we borrowed the concept, but we tweaked it to say, hey, don't, only for, don't force me to pick an entire script. Let me choose the, the, the lines I want, and let me just select them and, and hit a hotkey and have it convert those selected lines instead of the entire script. Because I think for people, if you're trying to learn V2, and you want to see how would I re how would I do this in V2, it's a great thing to, to try, right? So we updated our, our tool there. But always remember, you know, we, we're not updating it. I figure once a quarter or so, we'll try to remember to go update it. Um, so it may get a little old at times. The screen locker, I think that's actually on our website now. I'm not too sure, but um, it's pretty cool. You can lock your screen, hit a hotkey and lock the screen. Uh, it's going to be a hard one to do a video on because when you hit the hotkey, your screen disappears. I guess the recording would still happen and we'll just keep talking and then hit it again and display, but you won't see it. Um, maybe I'll I'll fake it and I'll put a big black box over the screen. Uh, but yeah, it's great because in corporate America, I had these really crazy passwords I had to use and... It was ridiculous because uh, we had to change them every 90 days. And if I stepped away from the computer without locking my screens, I could get a quote unquote ticket and get, get in trouble at some point. So I wrote the script. So I hit a hotkey. It kills the power to my screens. It kills the majority of my keys and my mouse. So someone can't come up and just do something. And I can come back and hit a hotkey and just free it up without having to enter that crazy password that was always a pain in the butt to remember and to type. So yeah, so um, Irfan converted that one over. Let's see, screen logger, shell hooks, and which one? No, that was with our remote banner. We were playing with that, and uh, we were he was we were teaching, which we did a video. Isaiah and I did a video on the difference between shell hooks, window hooks, and 
uh, messages. And so that was that's a good one to watch if you're new to those things. Because with AutoHotKey, we we often just use what's built into AutoHotKey, but there's a lot of other things that you can still trigger with AutoHotKey that's not um, that basically Lexicos hasn't wrapped for us. If you're trying to automate a program and you can't find a way, often messages, you know, their send or post messages are great ways to do those. And they're crazy fast. But the, the shell hook, um, when we were talking about it, I wasn't sure when to use shell hooks versus window hooks versus a message and understanding the differences between them. So it was a fun uh, video. This checklist one, we talked about that before, showing it now. We have, let me see. Oh, no, this one, this is really cool. Let me see if I, let me launch this one. So I have an old video I did. I'll have to remake a new video here. But, um, what? Checklist. I, I launched the wrong one. Um, that's funny. Password encoder V2. This is one I was thinking. Well, let's stick with the checklist. I'm an idiot. So here, uh, and I told Rizwan we need to work on this. And it, it, it shouldn't, I shouldn't have to expand it, right? Like we should do a little more work to show it. But if I cross something off, it'll put in the timestamp of when I did. Oh, he just still didn't convert it to the 24 hour or 12 hour. It's the 24 hour, which most Americans have no idea what that means. Uh, but yeah, this is a great, cool little script to to uh, keep track of what things you've done in your list. You can have public lists. You can create a list. Um, I'm going to... New list. And then say... Let's say I had to... Um, I got to record a video. Edit video. And upload to YouTube. Um, and then create thumbnail. I won't worry about the typo. Thumbnail. Now I'll add it. Now, apply. Now, as I do stuff, I can cross it off. Um, and I and it doesn't get removed from my list. I'm not just deleting it. So this has that psychological effect of like, look, I did some work. Um, and I have a little bit of a record of when it was done. Um, although 1818 to me sounds like some year in the history. So... Um, this one, Riz Irfan's converting it to a 24-hour clock. I thought he had done that, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool script. Um, so that's that one. Now the one, oops, I closed the wrong tool. This encoder, simple password, test passcode, password encoder. I'm not sure if, well, we'll just go to the folder. Um, and then let me launch it. Now this one, I did a video years ago, and it didn't have this GUI, but you pick a random number, right? And now we have some tool tips up here. Um, you, what word do you want to change? Let's say my password, of course, like a lot of bad people, was password123. I can hit encode, and it's going to encode it this. This is what I could save in my any file. Um, and then I would read it and decode it. However, it, it, you had to really understand the hotkey in order to use this tool. And I know there's a lot of people who use AutoHotKey for sending passwords when you really don't want those saved as text files on your computer. So now what you can do is click this, and you can say select the folder where you want it saved. And this is actually it's remembering his last folder. But of course for me, it'd be somewhere else. Um, I'll just leave, let it go there. That's fine. And you give it a name. Now I, this is where I would say, this is what mine, like, dig dog. Doug. Something weird, right? Something no hacker is going to try to look for. And it's also, I'm telling it's a DLL, but it's not a DLL. It's actually any file. Um, and then there's the variable. Hey, when I go read this, I'm going to need a variable to store it in temporarily. I'm going to call temp var, and I'm going to hit save. Now it went and wrote, which I just saw pop up on my other screen here. Let me bring it over. It wrote this dig dog DLL file. Um, and if I drag that into site you'll see if someone actually looks at it they'll see oh here's a main section here's that temp variable here's the encoded version which even if they got this you're like what the hell is that right um but let's go back to the tool uh, i can also say let me assign a hotkey control shift q and now i'm going to copy that code and this is where we haven't done this yet because we want i want to use a notify class here um, and then, if I'm in, go open up Studio, and hit New, and Paste, now, here's the code to go read that file, decode it. Let's see if I can save this as, um, well, save. Save as, pass, test. 
Now when I run this, oh. so apparently there's a problem. Fetch a cause and next minute comma and um but you get the idea, right? And then you can have a hotkey to send your password. So that's what that's all about. Let me close that. Come back into here. Um, stream deck profile. So we were having a call with a radiologist and he wants to map out his stream deck to trigger things in um, the tool that most, most radiologists use a lot, uh, which the name of course is escaping at me at this moment. It'll come to me in a minute. Because uh, we spend a lot of time in with our clients in PowerScribe. And we were able with PowerScribe to automate getting the list and, and selecting from it. And then he was going to go like, okay, well, I'll map out a hotkey and then I'll send the hotkey and then have to go detect it in there. And I'm like, there's far, far better ways in PowerScribe. What we could do is, let me pull up the example here that we were using to start. Um, in PowerScribe, I'm sorry, Stream Deck. So here, let's say this volume increase. So here I'm calling an executable and I'm changing it with a parameter, identifying only the auto hotkey version of it, and then sending a one, which will, with this sound volume control, will increase the volume by one, but the decrease, if I press it, will decrease it by three, right? But the point is I'm passing parameters to the same um, program. And what we did with Isaias was we borrowed the whole idea and it took us a little bit of time because we didn't realize that you have to call an executable uh, in it. You can't just call a script directly. But we we were able to pass a parameter and say, okay, well, when I press this button, click brain or whatever the term, he's got some doctor terms, of course, they're all doctors and have these terms. But it allows us to, pass, instead of having hot these mapped to hotkeys and then having to go map inside the other tool all the hotkeys, you just click the button, it passes, it calls the same script and passes a, the word as a parameter. And then um, our script identifies where that is in PowerScribe and jumps to it for him like instantly. So he was really excited. Also, we um, at that call near the end of it, we had some other questions and our other client wanted to join earlier that's also a radiologist. So we got both of them on the call together and it was a lot of fun listening to these guys. They both had very different approaches and how they automate stuff. They're both really smart guys, but it was really fun listening to them and they just have very different ways of automating things. This is why AutoHockey is great, right? Because it's AutoHockey is very personal in how you use it and what you do. And that's what I keep trying to tell people. It's, it's what's great is you get to create custom, you can take any program and customize it to your needs and what how you work, right? And that's the beauty of it. But anyway, that's what we're doing with there. Um, Telegram, that was one I was showing, I think in that one, how um, those buttons I didn't click in Stream Deck, I have buttons I can press and in Telegram, it will activate that person and I don't have to go find them in the list. I hit the button and it's, I'm instantly on them and I can start typing, so that's really cool. Um, this step away and Urfan made some changes to it where it doesn't, it doesn't for, unfortunately work for me and he needs to figure out what's going on. But um, in Telegram, I'll, I'll hit it, let's see what it does. It um, didn't do anything. But what it should do is send a message. Oh, because, uh, yeah, I know why. I Yesterday, I, I um, accidentally cut through our fiber line with the tractor. I was out building a, a berm and a, and a swale. And you learn these things when you live in the country. But um, apparently, my fiber line was like six inches underground. And, yeah, loads of fun. Anyway, that's why that didn't work was um, I'm not online right now. And so I'm just recording this with uh, OBS. But, uh, anyway, it, uh, it was... It sends a message to Telegram to our group with the automator saying Joe stepped away. So if we're in the middle of something, and we had to also mute your mic and speakers. Um, and I think when Irfan did that, he something broke. And then on my version, uh, uh, so it, there was something wrong with mine. So anyway, that's what that is. The Telegram message. So another thing we're trying to do, because often we'll be doing our consultation calls with people, and we're trying to copy and paste. And even though you can sort of do that with Zoom, it's it's a pain, and you, but you can't always do it. And so what we're doing is we're writing a script that would allow us to give a script to a client. And basically when they launch it, if they copy and hit something else, like let's say they hit like on mine, if I hit Control-Shift-G, it would send it to our shared clipboard. 
and then we can paste and vice versa and we can write something and paste it and send it to him it's basically what our clip share tool does with us people at the automator but we have a shared network drive which is dropbox and we can't assume people are going to have dropbox installed so I was trying to think of a way to do it now. Irfan was looking at using the Telegram API, so the people have to be online, but we're online within Zoom looking at the screen in one way or the other, right? So they have to be online. So that's what um, that's what that is. We're working on that. This toddler keyboard, Rizwan worked on that. I think just it, it allows you to run it, and then when you, you hit a letter, it'll say what letter it is out loud. When my son was a kid, um, I mean, because I didn't want to discourage him from coming up to me, so when I'm at the computer. So he, I can hit a hotkey, it launches a script, opens Word at size like 30 font or 60 font, and then when you hit the letter, it will speak the letter out loud, uh, and then it locks everything else, so he can't mess something up that I'm not paying attention to. Here's that, here's more of the checklist. Um, toggle between monitors, that's one we just re released. Basically, I can right-click and throw. I decide which monitors, and actually, let me launch it here, because I don't remember... So toggle between monitors. So because I have more than one monitor, I can choose between one and three monitors. Um, oh, that's funny. He, he broke it. Normally, if this has three monitors, we sh it should tell you which monitor is which one. And that we had working before. What we decided was, hey, if you only have two monitors, don't bother to show the monitors because we know which ones they are. But I have three, and now it, it should have still displayed which monitor is which but allows us to assign a hotkey and then we can click it and like throw the program between the two monitors. It's really, really cool. It's a must have. If you use my window snipping tool, that's one they'll be just as, as heavily used. It's really awesome. Um, and this Unicode lookup tool, someone in the hero group. Oh yeah. Anthony was asking about a, a power, um, a, a gaming mouse and how to detect the buttons. Um, no, but actually there was someone that, that commented on the video, but, uh, the lookup, no, yeah, this was a different tool, the Unicode lookup tool. Uh, they, yeah, someone commented on a video about sending characters that we couldn't identify or they were in Unicode or other characters, um, it, but their file was saved as uh, probably an ASCII file. So I think that's where they were having problems, but I showed them this tool and it looks like it got a, some sort of an update to it, but it, uh, it helps with that. So hope you enjoyed that. Remember if, if you want to. You know, have more time in your day and you don't want to learn how to hotkey. This is what we do for a living and we help a lot of people save a lot more time. Actually, when those two radiologists were talking, it was really cool. One of the guys said, yeah, I, he's like, I work with these guys during the week. He's like, usually for about an hour a day, he's on the call with us. But we've automated, helped him do so much that even though he's on with us, not working for an hour of the day, he's still as productive as he was before. So out of, let's say, I don't, I'm not sure if he works eight hours. Let's say he does. So now he gets done in seven hours what he used to take him eight, right? Which is nothing. And what's really cool is we don't always have calls with him. So when he works eight hours, he said almost every time he's at, because he tracks everything in his performance and metrics. And he's like, usually every time I'm at a, a threshold of a, a record, you know, day where he's getting more done than he's ever done before. So that was really, really cool to hear that. But um, yeah, that was where... You know, why learn to be a, a programmer and, and when you can hire people like Isaiah and Irving? Because like I said, I, that's what I, I stopped realizing I'm far better at other things and let's let the people who really know what they're doing. You know, I'm okay at programming and I'm, I'm aware of the stuff. It's right in the code that like I'm not the best at. But yeah, we that's what we you know. It's one of the things we offer. Of course, we do have great courses and the courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So if you're interested, uh, check out our courses. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like this video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Cheers.